Today is August 2nd, 2013, and my name is Linda Arroyo Holmstrom. I'm interviewing Marta Moreno, who is the director of El Comité in Lamont, Colorado. This interview is being recorded for the Boulder County Latino History Project and the Maria Rogers Oral History Program. The interview is being filmed by Irle Hernandez. First of all, Marta, thank you for taking out the time. We know how busy you are as the director of El Comité. Um, could you please share where and where and when were you born? I was born in El Paso, Texas, back in March the 27th, in 1946. What were, um, do you have any me childhood memories that you recall or, or influences when you were young that have impacted your life? Well, you know, way back then, my father and mother were very cautious, very protective. Like kids nowadays, they spend homes with their uh, with their friends. You know, I'm going to spend a uh, night over them. We were never allowed to do that, but we had the opportunity to do it. And I said, "Wow!" Because it was really weird because we did not have a father. My father passed when he, I was about six or seven, so actually we didn't really grow up other than my brothers and sisters. And for us to stay somewhere else with somebody else's home was really uncomfortable because we didn't have a father and they did and my mother never felt good about us spending night quedarnos con una amiga esta noche no 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 que 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 eso and we didn't decide that porque nomás no era parte de nosotros it was not part of us but we did we were able to so I said ah, wow you know a little uncomfortable but I was able to to do it so probably when I would grow up I said oh I can talk about that. You know, I was not one of those that a lot of times many kids spend the night over their friends and have a, um, do some of those things and uh, we were not, we were not, we didn't grow up being that way, so. So do you, do you think your family was like your social circle? I mean, did you have a big extended family? Oh yeah, we were a big family. My father had uh, three wives. The first one, he had one child. The second one, he had five. The third one, which I'm part of the third leader, fuimos como trece. So all in total, we're about, about 21, 22 of us. Yo soy la segunda de abajo para arriba. Um. You know, it was a big family, you know. So in realidad, familia was just, many of us, que éramos una familia, familia grande y muy protegida de nuestro padre, you know, y nuestra madre también. Mm -hmm. Um, you talked about one value of being very protective, you know. Were there other values or traditions that your family, you know, really practiced? It was always respect, love, faith, integrity. It was very, very, very protective, very honest, very truthful, very loving, very faithful. Those were values that, that, that we were brought up with, with our father and mother. Um, who were some of your mentors besides your family and your parents? Were there any other mentors throughout your life that you think made a difference for you? Well, you know, father and mother were, were, were the basics, yeah, the, los primarios, primeros, los mentores, you know, in nuestras vidas. Y, y después, I guess, some of our teachers or actually church, the nuns, because we were brought up very close to the church. El CYO, Las Casas de Maria, and the, Las Inesitas, and very close to the church. So the nuns, the priests were very uh, mentors, role models in my life. Ellas como misioneras. I thought, well, I'm probably gonna be a missionary myself because I love the role that the nuns were, because we all thought for the rosary, the Casas de Maria, Las, uh, Las in my old via la virgen uh, ofrecer flores and stuff like that so it was a nun um how what would how did education for you make a difference i went to to high school mm -hmm. and then i had some uh, introduction to psychology and and little uh, classes here and there but i didn't go totally full to college my education was basic from my 
parents and then from my learning experience through the church and through community involvement. Can you tell us more about your learning experience through the community? Well, when we moved from El Paso here, in, in El Paso we had church involvement, nuestra gente, whatever, whatnot. But when I moved out here, uh, it was different, you know. Uh, back home, when I was in the eighth grade, uh, we moved from the barrio, from the Chamisal zone, because we grew in the Chamisal zone that belonged to Mexico. Mexico uh, had the, I mean, in the Estados Unidos built further in to the Chamisal zone, we belonged to Mexico. And then that was turned over to Mexico. So the government gave money to my parents to move away from that section that my father owned. So it moved us away into the barrio, I said the Anglo, you know, barrio, which was very difficult for us, for me. Went into the eighth grade, I flunked the eighth grade. I said, no, this is not my school. Yo no estoy entre rueros. I felt very uncomfortable. I was not really making an effort. The eighth grade was really, was really upset that they'd taken us away from our district school, moved us into another district from uh, the barrio district. And, into Ranchland Hills and Isleta section, whatever, because we had to move, we relocated. So, you know, to me that was very detrimental. I, I flunked the eighth grade. I said, this is not my school. And that, you know, and when we moved out here, you know, we always had the, uh, the celebraciones de la iglesia, en la comunidad, la gente hispana. Pero cuando nos movimos para acá, we moved out here back in 1974, 76, in fact. We moved out here because my husband got hired through IBM as a mechanical engineer. So we moved para acá, you know. And at that time, they were trying to recruit minorities, uh, Hispanic as engineers, or Hispanic people for IBM. They visit uh, uh, California and then Boulder, and then they asked him again to bring the family because they really wanted Hispanics to be recruited in, in IBM. So that's why we winded up over here, you know. I want to go back to that mudanza, like when you had to move. How did it affect your family, like to sus papas? Como lo, well, lo afectó a ellos? My, my mother, you know, because my, I, I, when I was about six or seven, my father had passed. So uh -huh. it was my mother. I never thought I'd be one to move away from home, from my mother. My other brothers and sisters, yeah, they got married, they moved to California, Arizona, other parts of Texas, whatever, but I never, never knew that that was gonna happen to me. I didn't, I didn't never saw myself moving away. When we moved, I said, yo no me voy, me llevas. And it was his job, he had to accept, you know, to working with IBM. I said, it's your job, no es el mío. Tú eres el que vas a trabajar, no yo. So it was really, really hard. Uh, that year that I came, when we moved, I went back five times. Whatever the reason was, you know, yo regresaba para atrás. I, I, home, home was home. It was really difficult. Then we got adjusted, started seeing what was going on in the community. We lived two years in Boulder, then we moved to Longman. And ever since we've been here in Longman. Yeah, we moved on 74, 73, 74, we've been from Texas, El Paso. Then, when do you think um, you started feeling at home here? What happened that made you start feeling at home in Longmont? Well, I started having, my first daughter was born in Texas, and when she was on the second grade, we moved out here. So I had two more children. I started getting involved, because I said, what's going on here? We're going to have a quinceañera, there are misas in Spanish, there posadas, all that stuff that we grew up with. I was very involved in the church. And that was part of my life back there. So I knew I had to get involved, which I did. You know, uh, they had no Spanish mass. We started circulating petitions, but I said, no, no, aquí necesitamos una misa en español. And it started, you know, bilingual, once a month. I would find myself, orale, acuérdense, es el tercer domingo del mes, tienen que venir, porque si no, ahí va a estar el padre. Contando, contando, a ver si continúa la misa en español cada tercer domingo. It was kind of a pilot program, and it was bilingual. Then I said, no, 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 no. 
This is this is not not, not good. This is a, esto no es bilingüe, esto es bigringue. <risa> Tiene que ser en español o nada. Vámonos. Uh -huh. En nuestra lengua. Aquí está nuestra gente. Ellos tienen que cambiar. I was shaker and a mover, I guess. I, you know, things that needed to happen. You know, and my mom went got you know real, real um, in severe, very involved because I feel that's what we needed to do as nuestra gente. So we started developing quinceañeras. My daughter was kind of the first one que tuvo una quinceañera, reviving all las posadas and all those things. And and afterwards we we started having the mass not every third uh, Sunday of the month. Every Sunday, every Sunday, it grew, it grew, it grew, getting the Hispanos involved in everything and, and uh, uh, getting our celebration in our language, you know. And that's what not only I, but with others involved, we had to prove to the priests at the church that here are 350 families that won a Spanish bilingual mass and we all had to come about and, and do and take some action. Um, have you ever, I know this is sort of changing the subject, but did you ever experience discrimination because of, of being Latina? Well, it, back home, when I changed from, from, from school, I said, geez, I, I had a teacher that was teaching us Spanish, the uh, Angla. Okay, bueno, vamos a abrir los libros. I said, oh dear, you know. They never understood us that, ¿cómo va a poner una, una angla a enseñarnos en español y ella no lo sabe? They said, oh yeah, you know, we know, you know, we can teach you and stuff like that. And el de no dejarnos hablar en español y que es más cabas chicle, you know, you were punished, you know, este, in detention or whatever, what not. Pues, ¿qué pasa? Es nuestra lengua, ¿por qué no nos dejan? You know, and even when I came here, we moved and we were deciding, we lived in Boulder two years and then moved here in Long Island to look for a place. We wanted to look for somebody, somewhere else, you know, instead of Sophomore Park. Sophomore Park, they called it the IBM ghetto, you know, like they did at the uh, 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 Gun Barrel Apartments when people first moved and we moved to Long Island. So Sophomore Park was called the IBM ghetto. So the IBMers se venía allá. We were looking around and then down in Fox Hill or other areas they would tell us the realtors, no, 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 this, what's this? And I, I think you want to find a home over here. Diciendo por nosotros, what the hell is that? ¿Por qué? ¿Qué están? Porque somos raza. No nos quieren allá. We're not value. We're not, no podemos nosotros pagar la lana que los otros. Y acá nos quieren tenernos, acá en the ghetto, what the hell they call it. And, uh, and even in, in the part of the system, you know, we knew that, you know, no, you know, even though they didn't say it to you, you felt it. En donde ellos querían, donde querías vivir, que era bueno para ti, sin saber. You don't know. I know what I want. I know what I need. And, um, so know, did you get yeah. your house where you wanted it? Well, no. You know, because we 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 we, we said okay, because that's where you know they were building, and uh, eh, the value of the homes in Southmore Park were okay. Many of our friends were moving there, so we said, oh, okay, you know. But one mm -hmm. thing they did to us is when we bought that home, they first we didn't know whether we wanted the basement. They just said, well, well, maybe we don't want it. It's because all the models had the, uh, the prelude was one that had a, a cross there, a basement. They said, well, we want the basement after all. And they said, no, you, know, you can't have a basement. Go, why? You know, if this same model is across the street, has a basement, why can't ours have a basement? And they said, no, well, you know, the plants are not there to to the basement. But what they didn't tell us since it was first time home buyers, little did we know que esa área tenía seepage the water. So entraba el agua que si no hubieran hecho basement, la agua se nos hubiera penetrado, metido al basement. Y para no decirnos eso, en pues tontos first time home buyers, we knew we didn't know any better. Ahí nos ampotieron and we liked the house. But then what we didn't know that we were going to have problems. Two years we had problems with water seepage, where we had to rent, you know, the water swamp pump, uh, to pump the water out, swamp, to pump the water out of the basement that was, that was going in. We realized, no, no, estos están aquí haciendo lo que le dan su gana, porque somos hispanos y no sabemos any better. At the time, probably we didn't. We didn't know the difference of, you know, 
why you know then you look at the plans and check out hey is this really true you yeah, I can we, I cannot have a basement because the plans were not there instead of being honest mm -hmm. and telling us and that's what I said huh, se aprovechan con uno porque somos quien somos hispanos I noticed that you're holding a, a burro can you tell me about that you know when I introduce myself and I say my name is Marta Valenzuela Moreno, alias known as the Burris, the Burra number one. And I say, if for nothing else, don't you forget that. Because in my plate, it has Burris number one. I consider a Burris because I feel a lot like what my father was, very stubborn, you know, determined to get the job done, in spite of the workload or whatever. Y no nos rajamos y siempre trabajamos y no nos damos. You know, because I always say, hay dos letras, la B y la P. Y más vale tener la pura B y nada de P. Y no dejarnos, porque siempre, you know, ahí vamos a estar, luchando por nuestra gente, luchando por nosotros y luchando por whoever. I know that you fight hard for the community as the director of El Comité. Can you tell me how you originally became involved with El Comité? Back in 1980, there were two Hispanics that were shot and killed by two police officers. So El Pueblo Hispano se unió and came together and said, basta, you know, this is, this is not going to continue. Because there were signs. We did a book back then, and it, it was called We Too Came to Stay. We're here, and we are here to stay. There were signs on Main Street that said, no dogs or Mexicans are allowed in, in, in the in las tiendas, cantinas. There was this man that his uh, son had come out of the service and he uh, went to a bar and went in and the bartender, they, they tried to kick him out. He said, no, you can't be served here. What do you mean you can be served? Yes, I can. I just come from the army. I served my country. I need to be here. And they called the police, the sheriff, and then his dad arrived. He was no. My son went to the service. He's a U.S. citizen. Si fue a morir por su país, Andrew, aquí le van a servir. It's going to be served. The sheriff told the guy, well, yeah, that's true. You can't, you can't say he can't serve it. Mm -hmm. So when we form, we form to be that voice, that negotiating body between the Hispanic and non-Hispanic for any social need, concern that is brought forth, educational, social stuff, whatever. So. We came together and formed this organization. I was one of the co-founders you know, of this organization to help the people, to be that voice, to empower our gente, to help them become self-sufficient y de no dejarse, el que sí se puede. We work with, a, with a, I, I, I always say, we work with the young, the old, the restless, and in between, and even the dead. <laughs> yeah, we work with a diverse population, people from Guatemala, Hondureños, Mexicanos, Salvadoreños, Guatemaltecos, Peruanos, and from state to state. Language is a, a barrier, and how to navigate the system is another barrier. We help them to become self-sufficient, a que no se dejen, you know, a poder navegar por ellos mismos, and be that voice, that advocacy through, again, social service, uh, social justice. Now we have the police officers that come in, we give them, an, I call them the new cats on the block, when they're new officers. They send them to us. We give them an orientation. We tell them, you're out there to do law enforcement. We are here to do the social justice, which means we're going we're gonna to call you in case a citizen felt that you were unjust in the process of stopping them, giving them a ticket, and so forth and so on. And you will hear, we're going to hear from us. We are here to help you, to help the community trust and feel that the, that the law is there to protect them and help them. But yet, on the other hand, you know, if you're going to, they're going to come with concerns about how they were treated, we're going to look into it. So we suggest that if you see somebody that doesn't have a driver's license or doesn't have insurance, whatever, whatever by all means, give them their brochure, send them our way, you know, to help them. If you have any problems because of language, que no hablan la lengua y necesitan ayuda, by all means, hablen. I said, I live here, I am called 24 hours, and I don't mind that, you know. Whether it's in the hospital, whether it's a family uh, feud, whatever, whatnot, to help defuse the problem situation, 
I'm there and I will be there. So it's been years that we've been here in existence. And like I said, we came here to stay and we are here. It almost sounds like um, you're the heartbeat of the community to me. It sounds like you keep track of what's going on and you're, I always think of a heartbeat like a, the drum, you know, a mm -hmm. drumming. And it seems like you are able to help the community by, by being, having heartstrings that reach out to everyone. What, what do you think, what, I mean, I know the killing led of those two soul, young men, Chicano young men. What keeps you going every day? Because this, it sounds like 24 hours a day, that's a lot. Yeah. What keeps you going? Well, you know, the passion, I mean, the, the, the injustice that happens that I know it shouldn't. You know, um, the, the fact that, that keeps me, it, it's when I'm called for something that happens and I know it shouldn't happen. And people get uh, uh, stressed or whatever, uh, scared or whatever they call me, and I just try to keep them calm and say, no, no, don't worry, you know. Come see me Monday, eh, esto lo otro, or stay on the line, I'll call the police, I'll call whoever, and make that kind of a conference call, para que se apasiguen, se calmen. Y, y I've learned to, to play volleyball, because there are all other organizations that exist in this community that are given money, have money, much more than our organization has, and sometimes we feel we're doing their jobs. You know, we refer them to them, bouncing over there. If it's something that we need to call on their behalf and advocate for them, uh, we can, I, I, it's just the passion that I have. Uh, people tell me, well, ¿cuándo se va a jubilar? ¿Cuándo se va a retirar? When are you gonna retire? Well, I say, you know what? I'll retire when the need stops. So when there's no need, and there's no need of Marta, then, well, take it easy, you know. We have helped well, many organizations to help and do a collaboration. The why is now what it is, what it was not when I came here. Because we have the new director that wanted to reach the Hispanic population because it's at the place where it was not reflecting the population that it was supposed to serve. He's now our president, I'm on the whiteboard, and with other uh, collaborations that we network and, 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 and we have to in the community. We have, nosotros como Latinos, tenemos que no darnos por vencer, tenemos que ayudarnos y no resentir o envi envidia, ah, porque pues, no está aquí, está allá, y por qué, you know, you know, no, no, we can't be that yo-yo, you know, all of us can be that yo-yo. We all have to do our share and not resent the other because, you know, it's not you. You know, we have to enhance, we have to support, and we have to help each other. You know, ser como los alacranes, que unos arriba, unos metidos, y otros se pushan para abajo, para arriba, para adentro, whatever. We, we just need, you know, we're trying to work with our Latino population para que le entren a la política, you know, uh, ser la voz, you know. And we work with, uh, in our organization, we're trying to, uh, have people become a U.S. citizen. We're working with our with Catholic charities. Uh, we've been doing citizenship for the past six years, every three months, every three months. Pushando la gente, vámonos, hacerse ciudadanos, para que sean la voz, para que puedan votar, para que le entren a la política, en lo que sienten, ser la voz, los chamacos que se tienen que educar, why not, you know? If they hear and they are educated and they graduate and get a a uh, college degree or do whatever, and you want to go home, back home, wherever home is, will be it. No le hace, you know. Si se quieren ir allá a sus países, pues que se vayan, pero ya se van educados, where they're going to help to enhance the quality of life in their country, para que no se tengan que venir. Hacer esos cambios, el por qué, para qué se tienen que venir, se vienen porque la necesidad está muy crítica, y they come here for a life of opportunity opportunity for who, you know, let's help them get that opportunity. Y si se quieren vivir bien, y si quieren quedarse, pues también. I noticed that you have a logo for El Comite, and it's a tree. What's the saying that goes with that tree? We, we, we had a, 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 a board member that brought us a picture of a tree, and it was called the uh, elder. It said, de las raíces, de la raíz sale el fruto. 
So we are hoping that with the, the grassroots, el fruto que salga de lo que hacemos nosotros, fruto, you know, tenga producto y eh, eh, cosecha en lo que hacemos y, y siga, 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 siga creciendo. Branches of, de la raíz que surgen de, la, de, la, de nosotros y de la gente. Y que no hay otro dicho también que... Sí, que el, el dice, dice, sin acción no hay milagros. That's something really strong that I have in my voicemail of when they call. Sin acción no hay milagros. Que si quieres paz, lucha por la justicia. And that's very strong of what this organization feels. That's my word and my passion about, Thank about you, what Martha. I am, what I am. Um, are there, do you have any other comments or that or do you want to go deeper into something that we talked about earlier or is there something we miss? This is your opportunity to share anything else that you would, that you wish. You know, I, I think by doing these stories, and the first one that we put together you know, was part, and that we two came to stay, some of those elders have passed, that I think hopefully it becomes an educational for our kids and our grandkids, and that they don't forget that nosotros la gente tuvimos mucho, mucha contribución a nuestro país, a nuestro estado, and wherever. That they need not to forget who they are, who they come from, that they need to learn how to integrate. They don't have to assimilate, they don't have to give their language, they don't have to give their culture, their faith, whatever, y hacerse para poder avanzar y ser como the Joneses. No. You can get wherever you want if you so desire. Donde hay querer, hay poder. Y sí se puede. Y no hay que darnos por vencer. Tenemos que ayudarnos, tenemos que apoyarnos con ese amor y ese respeto y ese carismo que tenemos todos que, que tener. Thank you, Marta. I appreciate you taking your time to share your oral history with Thank us. Thank you. Yeah, okay, say? so you... Well, when I was yeah, you, you know, okay. Le digo yo, este joven, you know, usted ahorita está, está joven, decimos que son nuestros jóvenes, nuestro futuro, a future. No, son nuestro ya, ahorita. Ahorita está el futuro en sus manos. Usted va a ser, es ahorita, aquel poder y aquello que usted debe de ser uh, para la decisión Cuando usted quiere, donde hay querer, hay poder. Y seguir adelante. Y gracias a usted que están tomando este tiempo para hacer estas historias. Porque estas historias se necesitan de saber. Porque hay historia de nosotros los hispanos. No tenemos que... Hay muchos libros por todo lugar. Pero libros de nosotros no los hay. Los tenemos que escuchar. Y los tenemos que respetar. Y agradecerlos a mano. Y seguir adelante. Seguir adelante. Ustedes, los jóvenes, no son nuestro futuro, somos nuestro ya y hay que no dejarnos y seguir adelante y ser, seguir esas historias que no mueran tenerlas siempre frescas y para que todo mundo, todo joven todo niño lo vaya aprendiendo lo vaya aprendiendo y lo enseñemos y no nos detengamos ni tengamos miedo de decirlo y adelante, gracias a ustedes gracias a usted Marta Marta, could you, I know the El Comité does so much. Can you describe some, some more of the outreach that you do with the community? You know, um, cuando viene la gente aquí, they come for a need, a concern, a complaint, whatever. You know, we are seeing that many of our immigrant population that come here are sometimes victim of, of one another, you know, they come here with a life and opportunity para poder uh, ganar el dinero para sus familias. Trabajan, you know, muchas veces ellos, como no tienen seguro, you know, the government says, you cannot work or you don't have a social. Then on the other hand, you work, y ya, si te dinero, vámonos, I want my dinero, quieren su dinero para atrás. So they're able to get, uh, the pay their taxes through a 19 number, individual identification number. Pero muchas veces esta gente sufre, son víctimas de aquellos que se aprovechan de ellos. Because they come and work construction, landscaping, in the hotels, cleaning, 
uh, mantenimiento, and sometimes they are not being paid. They come here because there are hours of labor that are owed to them, and their patrones are not wanting to pay them. We've got people that are owed 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, mucho tipo de dinero en los restaurantes, o cuando van y limpian las casas. Hay muchas mujeres que de misma de nuestra gente se aprovechan de ellos y no les quieren pagar. I always like to, I talk to the employer, okay, you know, esta gente te trabajó tanto, tanto, le debes tanto, you need to pay them, because they're lost. The Department of Labor, the DA's office, you know, wages, abogados, que they are able to go to or take it with small claims. Esa gente se necesita de pagarles. Esa gente tiene familia, tienen renta, tienen comida, you know, que tienen que tener el dinero para que se les pague. No es justo that you work them, and now because they don't show you a social security number, I start diciendo, well, you don't give me a social, I can't pay you. Uh -uh, no, 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 no. You work them, you owe them. Vienen muchas veces que caen al hospital, and they don't realize that when they go into the hospital, it's the hospital, it's the doctor, it's the x-rays, it's the uh, uh, anesthesiologist, everybody that puts hand in their body, everybody they're going to build to. No tienen la idea, creen que pagando el hospital se va a pagar todo. So they have problems and they come here. I say, you need to come sooner. We start calling the hospital, we start calling the doctors to make a payment arrangement. I said, these people do not have health insurance. No tienen manera de pagar, pero están dispuestos. They want to pay, but we need to make a payment plan, you know. Y cuando es mucho dinero, mucho dinero, ¿cuándo lo vas a pagar? ¿No lo vas a poder? Vámonos, hacer bancarrota, porque pues, you can't pay it. You can't pay it, you can't pay, you're not going to be able to. So we help them to get and become responsible. Sí, que se ayuden. Se vienen de otro, otro país, se enferman por un accidente, o por enfermedad, o por whatever, they pass, and, you know, those families want their loved ones back home, wherever home is. So we have to work with the community, the churches, and the funeral homes. Funeral homes here are really gracious. They help those individuals, donde no tienen el dinero para pagar, les ayudan para mandar ese cuerpo para atrás. We help the funeral homes in the translations of the, of the, uh, uh, the uh, death certificate and all that kind of stuff. So we, the people know that this is a place that they can come. They trust and they feel comfortable, you know, para poder este, lograr lo que ellos necesiten. Esta oficina, esta organización hace mucho, bastante para, para la gente. And we struggle with money, yeah, because they see us as uh, activists. Estos um, trabajando con los inmigrantes, ayudando a la gente, da, 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 you know. We don't. We help them to become self-sufficient. We help them. How you learn to help yourself, you're going to learn to help the other. And that's really important for us. And people sometimes, they don't see, they don't, the funders don't see that and they don't understand that, you know. And, and that's uh, a lot of the struggle that we have. Landlord's tenants, you know, quieren echarlos para afuera. Van a querer rentar, you know, un apartamento, and they charge them for cada uno, 25, 25, y luego no les rentan. They say, wait a minute, you are charging this folk all this money, and you're not going to rent them? You tell them you're going to move them from one unit to the other unit? Porque ya tienen chinches, ya la fombra no, no sirve, no les ayudan, no les componen, y ustedes quieren agarrar la renta, so we connect them to the city, city codes. No, you know, you gotta connect with them to see if they're in violation of the court enforcement. You know, they need to learn that. So anything, you know, from que me pararon, me dieron ticket, porque mi perro está ladrilare. But when you know, it's just one of those, but they need to understand, and the system needs to understand. Some of these people don't know, they don't understand, you know. What is happening with those warnings in Cerrando los Tiquetes? Now we have the restorative justice, you know, este, uh, justicia restaurativa, que hay este, hay este programa y el sistema de police. No, no, there's the restorative justice. You need to refer them to them. Why are you not referring them? Just because of your discretion? Porque no te da la gana? Pues que te dé la gana. Vámonos. So it's like we have to be after the system. Well, thank you. I know. <laughs> I know El Comité does a lot for the community and we're all very grateful. Thank you, Marta. Thank you.